Josephine's Tales Into the Forest with Geraldi A Hanukkah Story In a small cosy town lives a little girl with dark curly hair, freckles across her nose and a big imagination. She's called Josephine. Josephine's mother works in the nearby department store as a manager and her father in the local bakery. They are really loving parents, but just too busy to tell stories to Josephine. To Josephine, this was a tragedy. But with a set mind and a dimpled smile, Josephine became the storyteller. Winter was Josephine's favourite season for many reasons. One of them was the hot cocoa, another was a warm fireplace, and lastly, the holiday Hanukkah. It was during one of those nights, the whole family sat by the fireplace, in the living room with dreidels and gelt spread across the wooden coffee table, Josephine began to tell a tale. On a sunny winter's day, Josie and her cousin Goldie were making a snowman in the backyard. Their mothers had shooed them out of the house while preparing for their Hanukkah party. Ah, Goldie sighed, I'm bored. Wouldn't it be great to walk in the forest? She asked walking away from the tiny snowman. Josie smiled brightly. We can, but we must stay together and not go too far from the house. That's what my dad always tells me. Oh, Josie, you don't have to worry. I am one year older than you and I am certain we will be safe, Goldie assured her. Off they went into the forest just beyond the fence yard. It was colder than the backyard because of the shade of the pine trees. Josie glanced back to make sure her home was still in sight before saying, just beyond this tree is a beautiful field. In the summer, it's full of daisies and there's even a nice hill for sledding when the snow is just right. Last year, my dad and I as Josie spoke, looking to her left, nearing the top of the snow-covered hill, Goldie decided to walk to the right, as quietly and quickly as she could. She was far too interested in discovering what sort of creatures lie deep in the forest. And off she went. Josie, on the other hand, was so caught up in telling at the time she tried to make her father into a snowman, she didn't notice Goldie wasn't with her until the very end of the story. Josie was alarmed, but didn't worry since she was a very smart girl. She knew there was no point in worrying when she could just follow Goldie's footprints. Bravely, she began to follow Goldie's footprints deeper and deeper into the forest, when suddenly she heard a familiar scream in the near distance. Goldie, she called out. Ah, was her only reply. As the scream got closer, Josie decided to stand still and wait. Cheeks red and her hair all a mess, Goldie came running towards her. Josie, run, run! There are bears, and one tried to eat me! Goldie cried, gripping her arms as she pulled her in the opposite direction. Bears? Yes, bears! They live in a house in the middle of the forest. Josie came to a full stop. Wait a minute, please, she demanded continuing only when Goldie turned around to face her. Bears don't live in houses. Goldie, tell me what happened. Goldie told her what happened after she wandered off into the depths of the forest. She came upon a small log cabin with the door still open and a delicious scent filling the air. It was soup. I was so hungry that I just had to have a taste from the bowl on the table. 
I did get a little carried away and finished it. Then I decided to relax a little since I was feeling a bit full and found a nice chair that unfortunately broke when I sat in it. After that, I could barely keep my eyes open, so I went to take a little nap in this adorable little bed right next to the fireplace. I had only just closed my eyes when I heard a noise and a huge bear was over me. I ran out of there as fast as I could. Josie couldn't believe what she was hearing and shook her head, replying, Goldie, bears do not live in houses. You're telling me you went into someone's home, ate their food, broke their chair, and slept in their bed? Um, yeah, Goldie replied ashamedly. We're not going home until you apologize, Goldie insisted, turning back in the direction of the cabin. Together, they returned to face the log cabin. Goldie, while holding tightly onto Josie with one hand, knocked on the door with the other. A bald man with a white beard and a twinkle in his eye opened the door. Ah, so you've returned. And not alone, I see, he said. Goldie bent her head. I'm sorry, sir, she mumbled. The man smiled brightly. It's all right. I'm Mr. Levy Cohen. And I am Mrs. Levy Cohen, said a woman just a hair shorter than him, standing at his side. And this is Bobo, our dog. Bobo was a great, big, brown dog with sad eyes. He's feeling a little down, Mr. Levy Cohen said, since you ate his supper. Goldie seemed to turn a slight shade of green. I ate his supper? She squeaked. Mrs. Levy Cohen nodded her head slowly. Unfortunately, you did. And that was his bed you were laying in, too, Mr. Levy Cohen chimed in with a hint of humor in his tone. Oh, my, poor Bobo, Josie giggled. We are very sorry about everything, especially your chair, said Goldie. It's all right. It needed repairs for the last five years, and I never got around to it. Now, I think it's important to call your parents to come pick you up. It's dangerous to walk through the forest. Here, you can use my cell phone. It turned out Josie's father was already on his way back from a quick run to the store, and the Levy Cohens lived only a street away from their house. He picked up the girls, apologized, and invited the Levy Cohens over for their Hanukkah party. They were delighted and accepted the offer. After lighting the candles and singing some songs, they all sat to enjoy a delicious meal and rolled in laughter as Goldie retold a bit of her adventure in the forest. From our perspective, we came in from our stroll and saw the broken chair. Mrs. Levy Cohen recounted, followed by a little voice screaming of a bear. Mr. Levy Cohen continued with a chuckle. All I saw was golden locks of hair flying out the door the next moment. I'd love to help you fix your chair, Josie's father said. I built this very table. Thank you, that is very kind, said Mr. Levy Cohen. We only visit during winter. Our children are broad during this season. They love the beach, we love the snow. Goldie dear, you haven't hardly eaten. Here's a latka, her mother insisted, pushing a latka onto her plate. Once again, Goldie turned a slight shade of green. Oy vey, she moaned, gripping her stomach. Oh, I couldn't eat another bite. I'm far too full. Maybe this time Bobo could eat your dinner instead, Josie quipped. Everyone laughed. Everyone 
except for Bobo, who was too busy eating his latkes. The end. Josephine said with a sip of her hot cocoa. That was a funny story, her mother praised. Where do you come up with these ideas? I think Goldie was absolutely ridiculous, her cousin Natalie interjected. Who would believe someone could be such a fraidy cat? Natalie's brother, Nathan, who was sitting beside her, reached into his pocket and cried out, Natty, catch this frog! And with one toss of his hand, Natalie let out a little scream, jumping to the other side of the room. It was only a napkin, he stated, chuckling, picking up the fallen imposter. Laughter filled the room as the menorah continued to burn brightly by the window. What did we learn from this story? Never eat a dog's food and sleep on its bed and expect it to be happy. Happy Hanukkah, everyone.